I wouldn't make excuses for you. I wouldn't look you in the eye and tell you everything is great, when in actuality the wheels are falling off the wagon. No, I'd point to the insufficiencies and remind you that you're capable of chipping away at them. I think that pragmatism can save someone's life. But guess what? Being human is knowing there are things you don't know. Realizing that growth is picking up little understandings along the way and bringing them with you into the future. Allowing them into the evolution that is you. And part of my personal evolution was coming face to face with the fact that looking forward isn't all of it. It's part of it. Yeah, we need to be better, of course. Yeah, we can always squeeze more value out of the time allotted to us, 100%. This forward progression, as far as I'm concerned, is intertwined in human fulfillment. But we are, in this moment, the manifestation of the obstacles we've already overcome. We are the times we wanted to stop and didn't. We are the losses we bounce back from and the adversity we forged into opportunity. We're the endings that we melted down into beautiful beginnings. We are the mistakes, the obstacles, the little encounters with hell that didn't define us, but instead changed us. And that matters. So quick story time. For about five years after I graduated college, some of my friends and I had this fantasy baseball league we'd use to stay in touch, right? And I think even they would begrudgingly admit that I was oddly good at it. I won like three or four out of the five years or something like that. And you know what my strategy was? It was simple. I picked players based on who they were over the course of their career, not based on how they performed last year, which is a trap people seem to fall into, right? So a guy that hits 30 home runs six years in a row, and then last year suddenly only hits seven, it's not out of the question to think he'll hit 30 again, revert back to the mean, to his average, his track record. That to me is more meaningful than some recent struggle, and I took that bet every time. Now, as you can imagine, the point I'm making here has nothing to do with baseball. It has everything to do with life in general. So much of the time, we completely focus on the current insufficiencies, the bad things happening now, the misfortunes in our lives. We're striking out and our brain goes into panic mode. It says gap, gap, gap. How do we fill it? And again, yes, that's important. And right? our plan for resurgence is necessary, but we can't forget who we are and what we've done. We can't overlook our track record. As the saying goes, you've survived 100% of the bad days. You've lived through countless struggles. You've climbed out of many catastrophes, at least I have. And it seems as though it's when we need that reassurance most that we are most inclined to forget. It's when we, more than any other time, need to prove to ourselves that we are unconquerable, that we question our ability to persevere. I'd never say to you the road ahead will be easy. I'm not saying it won't suck at times. I'm not saying it won't take all of you. I'm merely saying that you are equipped to emerge victorious, to handle not some of it, but all of it. I'm saying that the person in the mirror is stronger than you can even imagine. But understand, you're not operating on blind faith here. You're not hoping for some miracle. You're operating on your own record of success. What you do is find a way. What you do is win. You don't believe me? Look over your shoulder. Take a trip down memory lane. Glance back at all the mountains you've already climbed. And life, it won't be smooth sailing all the time. You'll have your slumps and your adversity, no question. 
but they're not you. They are what you were made to navigate. Everything has brought you to this point. And it's great to focus on this point, but don't lose the everything. Sometimes it's not about who you will be someday. Sometimes it's about what you've already become. It's about who you are now. Peter Drucker has said that what gets measured gets improved. And this insight's been incredibly valuable to me over the years. I want to explain why. Until you measure something, you're operating in somewhat of a black box. You're essentially guessing, aiming at targets you can't see, which ultimately means you're leaving life up to chance. But once you begin to gauge your progress in a specified area, you now have information to work with. You have an increased sense of awareness and the ability to focus. Which, as I've said before, and believe wholeheartedly, what you focus on becomes your reality. So here's a quick example that I think adequately uh, paints a picture here of what I'm talking about. Uh, Way back when I first started my business, I was uh, chatting with a friend about wanting to grow my YouTube subscribers, add value to as many people as I possibly could with my work. Back then, it was all YouTube. That was the crux of my business. And so the first question he asked, he goes, just out of curiosity, how many subscribers join the channel daily? And I realized in that moment, you know, I don't know. I knew the total amount, like I kept tabs on that, but not the sort of daily fluctuation, how much grew on Monday versus Friday, you know, that type of thing. Uh, And this guy, he had a tracker. He's very big on that. Basically a sheet with the most important things that he's trying to change in his life. And every day when he would wake up, he'd record a quick measurement in each of those categories. My first thought was, eh, you know, that's a little over the top. It's a little extra. But hey, one of my favorite mantras is that you are your own experiment. And I was happy to try something new that, you know, could have a positive impact. And so I did. I started uh, recording daily the net subscribers that join the Your World Within community. And what I found was incredible. They say it's the simple things that make the greatest difference in our lives. And this would certainly be no exception, right? First and foremost, just seeing that number every day kept growth at the forefront of my mind. It kept me aware and excited and thinking through that lens as if I were on a journey or mission to outperform the me of yesterday, right? If on some random day you grow 30% more than you usually do, it's only normal to see that and ask, well, why can't this happen every day? Why can't this be my reality? And next, and, and probably more obvious, it armed me with the tools to tactically improve my performance. Those daily metrics helped me find critical answers, arrive at important conclusions. You know, what days of the week and weeks of the year have the greatest impact? What trends lead to increased viewership? My daily average subscriber count is X. I wonder what it would take to bring it to Y, right? And so basically, instead of just showing up every day with my fingers crossed and hoping I'd hit it out of the park, I had a more informed approach. It's like taking a blindfold off. And all of this prompted by writing one little number down in the morning. The more I did this, the more it became obvious that it should be implemented in other aspects of my life. If this is important to me, if I say with conviction, this is an area I want to improve, how could I afford to not know the extent of its growth? And now I do track the handful of things I'm most invested in growing because those will be most impacted by my giving them attention. There's a saying that what you water grows. Well, your focus and your attention is what will water the seed, what will give it life. If you're looking to lose weight, but you never look at the scale, you're hurting yourself. 
right? And you might say, well, I don't want to be all about the numbers, right? It's a lifestyle change. And I certainly agree. The point is not to track every single step you make. It's to realize how often we operate blindly. It's to show you that with 100% certainty, your increased awareness and attention dedicated to any pursuit will make you more effective in bringing about your desired result. Knowing your daily progress keeps you in the game. It keeps you excited and also arms you with the tools to make the necessary changes. See, we are brilliant creatures capable of incredible things, but it's critical that we position ourselves so that we can win the game. It's critical that we not only look, but see. To be simplified, to condense life down to only what's important and to monitor those things that are important to you will give you a tremendous advantage. And again, this is basic stuff, but we skip the basic stuff because we think the big changes come from complexity. They don't. They come from choosing a target and working to get closer and closer to its bullseye. Like Greg McCune says in Essentialism, growth often has nothing to do with the acquisition of more. Sometimes it's about eliminating the things we don't need and focusing on that which we do. Now I'm suggesting we take it one step further and measure our growth as we take those meaningful things into the great unknown. Life can be challenging, that's no secret. So why not arm ourselves with every advantage available to us? Why not keep yourself excited and invested and knowledgeable? Often we look around at what we don't have and think, man, I could never have what they have. I could never do what he or she does. The reality is, they identified what matters and brought it to life one small step at a time. And guess what? You can do the same. It's not a miracle you need, it's awareness. So here's to keeping your eyes open to not only looking but seeing, and in doing so, getting results from the opportunity we otherwise would walk right by. Quite some time has gone by since the last letter I wrote to my younger self. A few years, actually. And I think we're due. Because older me continues to learn to both enjoy and be humbled by life. To experience hellos and endure goodbyes. To win and to lose, to acquire and to cut away the world is a maze of complexity to navigate. And maybe we should start right there. Because look, kid, there are some fundamental ideas about life that you just have wrong. There is no door that you walk through where you suddenly go from not understanding to finally having all the answers. Part of growing up is realizing how little human beings know about anything. And that's okay. What you'll understand is it's not a reason to run, it's a source of courage to draw from. Oh, but adults are wise, you might think. No, adults are just children with mortgages. You'll learn that, and, and as we all become renters, even that's changing, right? Oh, but him over there, or her, wait, them, they have it all figured out. No, they just walk with conviction into their individual unknowns. That's all. Oh, but there has to be some certainty. We have to know some things for sure, you might think. Well, certainly we do, or at least we think we do, but you have to understand, 150 years ago, science said bleeding someone out would cure them of their illness, 
right? Our pursuit of truth is crucial, but it's a work in progress. Life is a work in progress. You are a work in progress. So what am I talking about? Why does this matter? Because I don't want you to think that you are ill-prepared to venture further into your potential. I don't want you to think that other people have what you don't, that you're not enough. The world around you is chaos. It's a mess. It's, it's clay. Some people use it to build and create and shape the reality, and others, well, others don't. The kicker here is that nothing is built if you don't first give yourself permission to take the unknowns and, and make something with them. Once you understand that there is no secret code that must be figured out, you free yourself to explore and capture the essence of being alive. Again, life is messy. So go flail around, wander, go get lost. Who cares? You see what I'm saying? You can watch from afar, succumbing to the illusion that the world is some uh, meticulously constructed orchestra where everything's playing in unison. Or you can dive in and make your own music, dance to your own melodies, because there is no perfect. There are people who stand still and people who pick up the pieces as they go. Next, and very closely related, younger me, give yourself a chance. Try things. No, more things, bigger things, terrifying things. You see those posters of people you have hung up on your wall? They're not of a different world. They're people like you. Right? But they decided along the way that they would try that they would step out of line, break some rules, push life, and see how hard life pushed back. Younger me, on my college essay, I referenced one of my favorite quotes. I attributed it to Mark Twain. Turns out it wasn't even by him, but hey, life goes on, right? It said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines. Sail away from the safe harbor. Catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover. It's a beautiful quote, and here's what I gather from it. The biggest mistakes I've made over the course of my lifetime ended up being my greatest teachers, leading me to something new, to where I most needed to be, I mean, a lot of my mistakes are even funny stories, right? That I joke about with buddies over a beer. The vast majority of things you're worried about, they either won't happen or they're reversible. But what gets you, younger me, what truly hurts is wishing you had the courage to apply to that thing that you instead let the deadline slip away or talk to that person you walked right by, or audition, or train, or travel, or follow your intuition, your heart to some place new. Those are the things we tend to carry around. The second you learn that not going is far scarier than stepping out into the unknown, you'll possess a perspective that's incredibly valuable. It will change your life. And lastly, this one's kind of hard to articulate, but let me tell you, it continues to resurface. Here it is. If your intuition is telling you something, listen, trust it. If something feels wrong, let it go. If it feels like it's where you need to be, you're being pulled in that direction, explore, move towards it. When you know in 30 seconds that someone isn't a good person, don't give them your time. When something doesn't align with your goals or objectives, don't feel bad walking away. When something excites you, trust that feeling. 
this is all intuition, and I've come to find that initial response to be more and more valuable. What that feeling is telling you matters. Don't turn your back on that. Now, of course, there's a line we have to walk or an element of pragmatism we have to hold on to. Sometimes when we're particularly upset, it makes sense to let the emotions subside and allow rationality to enter. But this is more about being aware of who you are and what you want, right? Don't talk yourself out of what you know you want and into what you know you don't. Life gives clues. It's not always 4D chess. Sometimes it can be simple. What's needed is right there. But you have to look around. You have to listen and trust yourself and no one will ever know you better than you. But if you tune yourself out, then how can you have a shot at living a meaningful life? One on your own terms, be impossible. So younger me, trust yourself beyond what anyone else tells you is best or most beneficial. Again, those are answers only you know. So listen to you. One of my favorite messages is that you are your own experiment. That as we move forward into the haze of the unknown, we understand that at times we'll fall. At times we'll see our plans uh, disintegrate right in front of us. But this is when we step back and really examine, not a cause for alarm, but a chance to celebrate. Celebrate because the world pushing back at you implies that you are moving forward. And that is strength. As the saying goes, in the broken places, the light shines through. Younger me, promise me you won't be scared of breaking. That you won't fear leaving the harbor. Because nothing out there is bigger than you or too much for you to handle or navigate. The funny thing is, younger me, that your journey is reliant on you giving yourself permission to go to see, to explore. All that starts with you greenlighting your own adventure. But remember what I'm telling you. There is no rubric for life, it's trial and error. Remember that if you don't give yourself a chance, you simply watch the opportunity slip by. And remember that you are the only one who knows what's best for you. So trust that intuition. The world will be whatever you choose to make it. And my hope is that you realize you are strong enough. You're bold enough. You're capable enough to make it whatever that might be. So younger me, go pave your path. Go blaze your trail. And remember along the way, as you navigate the ups and downs, highs and lows, remember to look up and enjoy the ride. The difficulty we face in life is not personal. If you remember this, you disarm every adversary, obstacle, every complication you'll ever face. So quick story. Recently, I was renewing a lease for my apartment. Something that usually is pretty simple, right? Only this time, things were not simple. Confusion, chaos, misunderstanding after misunderstanding. 
I received emails and letters saying, you know, you need to provide these documents in order to renew. You need to have X, Y, Z information submitted to us ASAP. And uh, I'm sitting here thinking, guys, you have all this info, right? I've lived here a year, same guy. Let's put two and two together. And after a while, I started to get like truly annoyed, eventually to the point of taking it personally. So I stopped what I was doing and uh, go down to the front office thinking I'm going to go scorched earth here. I really wanted to emphasize how absurd and ridiculous all this was. I opened the door and just kind of stopped in my tracks. First thing I see is a crowded room filled with tenants asking for things, making requests, looking for info. And the people that worked there were so patient and kind, running around doing their absolute best to make everyone happy and get everything done. And almost immediately I realized, Eddie, you made this about you. This is not in any way about you. Basically, I created this fallacy that because things weren't working the way I wanted them to, then there must have been some universal resistance, right? There's an idea I heard a while back that very rarely steers me wrong. It's that two things can simultaneously be true at once. So in this case, is there opportunity for these guys to tighten up a bit, bring more clarity to their operations and best practices? Yeah, certainly true. But on the other hand, was building this up as a them versus me match in my head dumb and counterproductive? Yes, also true. The world will always provide adversity, right? That's not news to anyone. It's just what the world does. That adversity will take a thousand different shapes and appear an infinite number of ways. But here's the deal. Life is neutral. Things just happen. They aren't good or bad. They just exist in the ether. We as storytellers decide to put a charge into things. We decide whether it's happening to us or for us. We choose. And that's the takeaway here. There's power in remembering not to take things personally in any aspect of life. Because when we do, we actually lose our grip on reality. We become emotional and not rational. And this is visible everywhere. Right? Take rejection, for example, something we all deal with. It's not personal. The person on the other end is thinking about themselves. They're locked in on their own incentives. They're not thinking about you. And however you feel about this, it's just the truth. So assess the situation. Sure, maybe find some areas where you can improve and carry on. Being mistreated. Again, not about you. As the saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. Same goes for criticism and hate online. Right? Something that a lot of people truly fear. It will almost always be true that people who uh, are more accomplished than you or further along in their career trajectory won't waste time bringing you down in the comment section. No, it's people saying things hoping that their comments will get approval and attention so they can feel validated. Their actions are being carried out for, ready for this, themselves. And to misdiagnose or take it as a shot to the heart well, that's creating a battle scenario that doesn't need to exist. It's not them versus you, it's them versus them. You're just in the crossfire. Now, does this perspective or, or point to not take things personally uh, mean that we abdicate personal responsibility? Does it mean we say, well, it's not me, it's, it's the world, so not my problem? No, of course not, right? This perspective, gives you the power to do the right things and the necessary things because you understand that the problems you face are not a giant indictment of you as a person. Getting angry creates a scenario where, you know, you reallocate your, your energy from doing what's best for you to instead being mad at him or her or this group or that circumstance or the world in general. 
You know, bad things happen. And by the way, they happen to everyone. Everyone gets rejected at some point. Everyone gets let down by people close to them at some point. Everyone loses their way at some point. Everyone has their expectations fall short. Everyone has pushback. It's not just you. It's the world doing what the world does. And there's eight billion of us running around operating uh, in our best interest, trying to navigate a big, crazy world that's often uh, incredibly difficult to understand. So with this perspective, right, going forward, you know, my lesson from a few weeks ago, what would I have done differently during all that chaos with the apartment? A handful of things. I'd right? first of all remind myself that in the grand scheme of things, it's trivial. It's just not that important. Two, understand incentives. Right? These folks aren't trying to make things hard for me. They're trying to do their jobs well so they can live their best lives, which brought their attention to other things. It happens. And three, when you're calm, you can actually solve the problems at hand. When you don't stack your problems up to look like adversaries working against you, when you instead see them as merely a challenge or puzzle to be solved, life starts to look a lot different. It just feels different to walk around as though life is on your side, as though hardship is nothing more than the water necessary for the seed to grow, as though all those challenges you face are opportunities being presented to you. Because I'm not sure you can simultaneously fight and solve. I think one of our most important decisions is to select one. You can make the rejection an opponent, the criticism a rival, you can make the disorder your nemesis, or you can realize that all of it falls squarely into the box that is life. Pieces to be taken out one by one so that you can construct the ideal. Life comes down to the advantages that exist all around us, the choices we make to live freely with the wind at our backs or confined by the walls we build around ourselves. And sure, your current obstacles might be because of decisions you've made, maybe even decisions you wish you could take back. But the current moment right now in this second is neutral. It does not hold a grudge or have an agenda. Now, right now, is simply right now. In the same way that two plus two is four. Four is not good or bad. It doesn't want you to win or lose. It's just four. Same goes for the crossroads before you. And that puts the onus entirely on you to decide what you will make it all mean. Will you slow things down to find clarity? Will you open your eyes to see the value? Because look, there will always be a delta between reality and the stories we tell ourselves about reality. That's just how human beings work. It's how we've managed to survive for millennia. So understand that and gift yourself the narratives that bring you closer to the place you want to be. The road before you will be challenging, not because it's pushback is personal, but because amidst the resistance, you'll find the components you need to live your very best life.